Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In your reincarnation, let's have a look at Lars, the handout versions. We'll do a fashion check for him. And this will be the uh, first uh, video that I do of Western clothing. Up to now, I've been doing uh, Japanese uh, inspired kimono and that kind of thing. Uh, but with Lars here, let's have a look at some non Japanese clothing. <laughs> and then we're going to start with the uh, two star version here, because this one is kind of the most baffling to me. I, my wheelhouse is more sort of like American and English fashion, uh, men's fashion from like, uh, gosh, maybe mid 1800s and on. Uh, but the stuff going on here, some of it's very modern, uh, like in the uh, like the silhouette or the uh, the fit. Uh, but there are some things here that are that kind of remind me of like Three Musketeers, like swashbuckling, maybe uh, pirates also. But uh, we can rotate him here, and we can see like uh, different uh, patterns, uh, different fabrics sewn together to create this. And yeah, that, this strikes me more as like French or Italian than either English or American. And then let's uh, zoom in. Let's have a look at the uh, white shirt that he is wearing. It looks a lot like pleats there in the front, uh, which is what you typically see with uh, tuxedo shirts. And then if we look at the, uh, the collar of the shirt, that is standing up. Uh, nowadays, we wear dress shirts, we turn the collar down. Uh, but in the old days, or very old days, they would uh, wear it all the way up. Uh, but like, um, who is it, Virgil Earp from uh, Tombstone, that movie, he wore his collar up. And then we can see the uh, fabric here, different uh, patterns and things. On this uh, coat that he's wearing, there's no real collar to it. You could call that like a, a grandfather collar. There's nothing folded down. And then we see uh, sleeves that are pulled up. They have kind of a um, like a buttoned cuff, which kind of comes back on itself. And then short gloves. And then let's look at the trousers. This is actually a high-rise trouser, but it's kind of folded over, so it ends up looking like a low-rise trouser which is kind of a more recent look, better looking on uh, thinner, younger men. <laughs> and let's see if we can look at the footwear. Looks like a uh, over the calf boot with again, a uh, turnover near the top there. And then very slim leg on the trousers. And then a very long, long skirt on the uh, coat. It was way beyond his uh, fingertips. But yeah, I think that will do it for uh, Two Star Lars. Kind of a mix of uh, old and new with more of a uh, European vibe. Okay, next, let's look at the recent Three Star Handout Lars. This is the uh, kind of the catalyst for me wanting to make this video. Uh, but, uh, you know, people saw him and they said that he looked like a flight attendant. And I was like, oh my God, is that your only frame of reference here? Now, nothing against flight attendants. I think their fashion is fascinating. Uh, they have a great history, different airlines in different countries, they have their own uniforms, and uh, it might be fun to study that, but I also might come across as uh, creepy. Uh, but I think the reason why people are calling this a uh, flight attendant is because of the little uh, cap that he is wearing. Uh, but actually that cap is not that little, just Lars has so much hair that it does look little. And then what I first thought of when I saw this uh, outfit was the uh, RAF uh, Royal Air Force pilots uh, from World War II. And we can see a lot of uh, similarities here. Uh, the uh, little cap on the head, uh, the, uh, the necktie, and then the very high uh, V-zone with the, uh, the jacket closed, and then kind of a uh, neutral color. And so while the previous uh, uniform or the previous outfit seemed kind of continental, this one seems more English uh, to me. Uh, but we can get closer in here. Uh, that is a double-breasted coat, so it's kind of a folded over itself like extra. And then a uh, turned down collar with like a black uh, lapel detail there. That might be leather, actually. And then a two-tone on the, uh, the kind of the left and the right sides, which is not standard issue. <laughs> And we have a lot of uh, kind of uh, additional parts here. 
Uh, little epulots, those are the uh, kind of the shoulder strap thing that we see there, kind of uh, secured down. That has a um, kind of a decorational, or uh, you can tell your rank by looking at that. We'll have more looks at that later. And then here, this might be the uh, section that is most different from the uh, RAF uniform, uh, but that is the, uh, the below the waist uh, portion. But yeah, we can see this kind of like a flap hanging down the front. It's got some kind of uh, embroidery on there. And then let's talk about the uh, trousers. Not sure about the uh, pronunciation. The uh, Jodhpur trousers uh, from India, or maybe they're like English breeches. Uh, but they have a very full thigh uh, because um, that was to make it easier for the wearer uh, to ride horses or later motorcycles. It's got that extra room in there. Uh, but later it kind of was adopted by officers uh, to show that they were of a higher rank. If you look at like just the enlisted men of the army, they all have uh, straight leg trousers. And then typically shorter uh, boots because, you know, there wasn't enough leather to give everybody the, uh, the knee-high boots. So actually this uh, Lars here, he might have a uh, kind of a semi-high uh, ranking in the, uh, the Navy or the Air Force rather. And then uh, the boots, it looks like they're over the knee, uh, but if we look at it from behind, it looks like it goes up to over the calf, and then there's like a knee uh, section in front. But very, very cool costume. Okay, next, let's look at the launch uh, three-star Lars. This is maybe the most modern costume of anybody in the game, but uh, yeah, very cool looking. And then he has um, sort of a semi-modern uh, silhouette where he has kind of a more full upper body and then a very slim uh, lower body. That's something that I actually like to uh, wear myself. <laughs> okay, but we can see kind of a, a shorter uh, bomber jacket on him. And again, low rise trousers, a uh, kind of a scarf or muffler tied around his neck for some volume there, and then kind of a fanny pack, but worn in a cool way across his uh, chest. <laughs> All right, let's zoom in. Let's look at the uh, jacket first. This might be leather, it might be nylon, uh, but this is like a, uh, like a standard issue bomber jacket that we would see. It's called a bomber jacket because it has a very uh, short uh, trunk or torso and the sleeves are longer than the torso, actually. And the reason for that is because uh, when you're bombing, you are sitting down. So you don't want a long uh, coat to uh, get in the way. And then it's got the ribbing around the, uh, the sleeve ends and then also the bottom of the trunk. That is to uh, kind of pinch uh, your body so that the air stays in when you're flying in a bomber. It's going to be very cold up there, so that's to uh, preserve heat. And then we can't see the, uh, the collar, but I'll put up a picture of what it probably looks like. And then, uh, yeah, this is a good looking jacket even today. If you don't have one of these, I would recommend to go out and uh, get one. The nylon ones are not very expensive. You can get uh, black or whatever you like. All right, and then here, uh, let's look at these shoes. I thought these were sneakers at first, but they actually look kind of like a low uh, boot, which is very interesting. Uh, but got a, a good amount of volume uh, to sort of also contrast with the uh, the slimness of his leg. Okay, that was three star launch Lars. Okay, here is the uh, four star handout from Anniversary. This one's pretty wild. Uh, again, I don't have personally a lot of knowledge about this sort of uh, men's fashion history. But it makes me think of like a uh, circus ringmaster or like a uh, conductor of an orchestra. <laughs> but uh, gold and black, which is a uh, kind of a similar theme across all of the anniversary characters, uh, which I think is a very chic uh, combo, color combo. Okay, but we have kind of a, a double breasted uh, jacket again with a uh, cutaway skirt. So it's like shorter in front and then longer in back. And then let's zoom in. Let's look at the uh, V-zone where his uh, necktie is. So it looks like he's wearing a gray uh, dress shirt, 
kind of a, a gold tie there. And then uh, we can see the uh, collar of this uh, coat. It's a, a shawl collar. So there's no notch, it just goes straight from the back of the neck down to the front. And then kind of a, a shoulder covering, uh, which I want to say is from like uh, more kind of outdoorsy clothing, where that is on a, a coat in order to improve the, uh, the rain uh, resistance. But here it's just uh, ceremonial. And then we have the, uh, the double-breastedness, the, uh, the two buttons next to each other. And we can see the trousers. This is a uh, high-rise trouser. So maybe up to his uh, belly button or above. And then I want to say that a coat of like this length and then like this um, this fanciness would be something to wear over like a uh, shorter coat. But there are cases where like this is going to be what you wear above your uh, shirt. Like a morning dress or yeah, maybe if you're like a circus ringmaster. <laughs> All right, and then we can see the over the calf boots there. But yeah, very cool costume here too. Cool uh, hairstyle. Okay, last we have uh, Dark Memory Lars. Uh, this too uh, makes me think English. And then the first thing that I thought of was uh, Prince Charles when he got married to uh, Princess Diana or uh, Emperor Hirohito from Japan. <laughs> but this is more kind of a, uh, a ceremonial uniform, not a battle uniform. But we see some of the same things here, double-breasted, a uh, high rise pant, got the full legs from the uh, English breeches, high boots. Uh, this one has some extra stuff like uh, the, uh, the cape kind of coming off one side in the back there. I was kind of uh, admiring the uh, animation that they did there. <laughs> and then the uh, sash going across the front with the medals and this and that. So let's zoom in here. Okay. So here, this does not have a turn down collar. We can see that it's uh, standing straight up. Uh, we can see this on like uh, Marines in the US or like uh, the uh, Air Force there as well. And then uh, there's this uh, string that's kind of uh, like decorative or like rope, which is uh, kind of coming across the front. Depending on like different militaries, I've seen it in like Italian militaries, like the way where you uh, arrange the, uh, the knot, you know, is a way to express yourself. And then on the uh, shoulders here, we see the epilots, the very uh, frilly ones with the, uh, the tassels coming off. That is to kind of signal your rank. Uh, and then this, that was actually a battlefield uh, touch there. All right, and then we have the uh, sleeves. They have the, uh, the cuffs there. Got some uh, braiding, maybe it looks like there. Maybe we have a uh, waistcoat underneath the jacket high-rise pants again, and then the full thigh going into knee-high boots. So yeah, this is a very formal, very uh, ceremonial military uniform. Uh, you don't see these too much in uh, modern militaries, but see it sometimes on like dictators and stuff. Okay, that will do it for Lars. Uh, I am not a fan of uh, war. Uh, but I really, really like military uniforms, actually. <laughs> and they have a lot in common with the uh, the modern uh, men's suit. All right, sometime I want to do the, uh, the Hatcher versions of uh, Lars, but I still don't have the bloody one, uh, which I would have a lot to uh, say about as well. Um, so if and when I pull that version, I'll do the uh, Hatcher version fashion check for Lars. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.